on this cricket heavy sports max zone for the friday let's get this innings of the sports max zone started the jamaica cricket association is under new leadership as we revealed in thursday's show dr donovan bennett won the election against wilfred billy heaven with an overwhelming 67 to 30 margin at the jamaica conference center in kingston in his campaigning dr bennett promised transparency and increased involvement in decision making with stakeholders and after his victory on thursday the former first vice president said his initial focus will be on cricket development dr bennett bennett joins us now to talk about his plans dr bennett welcome to the sports max zone first time on the show and uh, great to have you on um let me start by congratulating you on the emphatic victory you had yesterday and uh, ask you first if you are surprised that your victory was so overwhelming um well first of all thanks thanks for both of you to having me on. No, I I wouldn't say I was surprised. Um, based on our projections, we were about plus or minus two votes off. But they, they, the election, um, for the most part, reflected our exp and and fulfilled what we we had expected to happen. Right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to talk quickly about your plans, but just allow me a, a couple of minutes to retrace the steps a bit. Because you were first mm -hmm. vice president for some time. And, you know, when you have these situations where a vice president challenges the president, um, people will ask questions about, you know, you being there and being a part of the system and then wanting to run against the president. Can you just take us through your decision um, to go up for the presidency when you had made it? Yeah, well, it, it was not easy. It, it was a very difficult decision because as a first vice president, my first responsibility would have been to be very, be very faithful to and to be um, supportive of my president. And that is what I did for the most part of my tenure as first vice president. But as things progressed, I became disenchanted, dis, dissatisfied with what was happening around us. And uh, I, I expressed my disappointments and try to pave what I thought was a way forward and that was ignored and, and not being followed. And, and at that time, I made a decision that, to, that, that the only way I would be able to, to, um, to, to achieve what I thought was in best interest of cricket and the best way forward was to lead myself. And um, like I said before, it was a very difficult decision, but I was spurred on by a large majority of the cricket landscape and um that is where we are that is where we are where we are today yeah and and quickly there was a, a story that um billy heaven had said a couple of years ago that he would not run for re-election but i heard him saying on radio this week that when he had said that it was because he was having some um some aspirations to be the cwi president but then that wasn't working out, so he changed his, his mind and, and decided that he would still continue or try to continue on as the Jamaica Cricket Association president. Was that your understanding of his position? Um, partially. Um, we did have a discussion, at, at which time he indicated to me that he would not be running again. Um, he went for the West Indies vice presidency, had to withdraw, was not successful there. Well, then again, he never came back to me and told me that because he was not successful, you know, he would not, he would not be running again. So I was under the impression that the discussions that we had were, um, had not changed. And then to my great surprise, he went to a small and, and announced his candidacy without consulting or coming back to me. Huh? Yeah. All right. Well, usually when you have uh, this kind of... Um lead up to an election, part of your immediate job is to um, bring things together and uh, ensure that the people who didn't vote for you are seeing eye to eye with, with your vision because it needs to be unified for the cricket to go forward. One of your first comments you made yesterday, um, Dr. Bennett, was focusing on the youth, uh, on the 13s, and trying to ensure that the grassroots of uh, cricket becomes firm so that the development of the game can go from there. Can you talk more about that? Well, I, I think what you heard is uh, it's what it is. Um, you know, the, 
the entire critical landscape is, is not what it should be. And um, we certainly have to rebuild. And I thought, that the, well, I, I know because I've been involved in youth cricket for so many years that we're, you would have to start to reap the maximum success is at the lowest level that you can go. And the lowest level is actually the under 13s. I mean, from age 9 to 13 is about the time when you have to start to ingrain into the minds of these youngsters, you know, what proper cricket, about proper cricket. And Dr. Bennett, based on the structures in place now, if any, and Technica, it's etc. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, so so the, the the task is to is to go across the country in the summer, and to um to to um have camps all over the country, all over the parishes and the clubs in Kingston, and hopefully from that we will have an an under thirty Jamaica squad, which which we we already have an offer from from the Trinidadians to host in Trinidad over over the next Christmas holiday. So we we have the plan well laid out, and uh, I think we have the funding for implementation. So I think as soon as the kids go, go on holidays in July, we will go full steam ahead with that program. Right. Of course, there are other things that we need to do too, but our main focus will be to start from the bottom and build upwards. All right, we just lost you for a couple seconds there, but of course we got the gist of the entire point, so that's always good. Um, Dr. Barrett, right. one of the other things that you spoke about and you know you used to push your campaign was transparency. So what I get is, you know, based on some of the things maybe you did not like with where the previous administration was going would have been that aspect, transparency. What do you intend to do to ensure that, you know, your team and, of course, the public, because I always say when you are elected or put into a public office, it's really to serve the people that put you there. What do you plan to do to ensure that your team is transparent? Well, before we even go there, let me congratulate your sister through you for Thank you. her performance yesterday. It's a young lady who I know very well. I have been on tour with her as a team doctor, and I am... I'm very happy that her game has developed to the point where she can be, be a dominant force in, um, Thank you. In, a, in the West Indies team now. So you could probably relate to her for me, my congratulations, etc. Okay? Yeah, right. thank you. Uh, she usually then, watches uh, us, so you'll, she'll get it for herself. Okay, all right, <laughs> fine. Yeah, so, so um, the, 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 the whole um, relationship between the clubs and parishes and the JCA had, had broken down. There was a fracture there, and um, nobody tried to heal it. Um, they, 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 the parishes and parishes were very disgruntled as to how they, they, um, they, they, the JCA handled their affairs. There was no, it was not a compassionate approach. It was a, the type of approach where this is we have, take it or leave it, no explanation. And so, and so it got to a point where, um, where there was no, no relationship at all between the clubs and the parishes and the JCA. And as you know, the face of the JCA, how the JCA looks, depends on how successful the clubs and parishes are, because yes. they are the ones who, who produce the players. So, so I know that this is, is the situation. I have had a lot of discourse with the clubs and parishes. I know where they are, I know their aspirations, I know how they feel of the relationship. And as such, it, it, it basically be one of my primary goals to sit down with them and to re rebuild a relationship which, um, which is based on respect for each other and for, and for an understanding of the needs of the clubs and parishes, what they need to have to be able to produce players of a particular standard for yeah. Jamaica. Right. And one more question mm -hmm. before I pass you back to Lance, Dr. Bennett. Mm -hmm. The fact that not too much cricket is being played here in Jamaica, it's something that, of course, the lovers of cricket, it's on their mind, including myself. You know, I want to see more cricket mm -hmm. being played in Jamaica. And anybody that loves the game will want that as well. Is that something on your agenda? You're talking about domestic cricket or international cricket? All cricket, any cricket, every cricket. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, well, well yeah, yeah. agreed. Um, Look, we're not, we were never short of plans 
at the JSA. I mean, there are a lot of plans that were laid down that were good plans. But the problem at the JSA was the implementation. That's number one. And number two, our, our park, our international park, had degenerated to, to the point where it became unsatisfactory to, um, to host international games here. So, so I can assure you that, that local cricket will, Im will involve more hours of play because um, I tell you, when I was involved in school work cricket, we had 70-something schools across the island yeah. playing competitive cricket, the Sunlight or the Headley Cup. It's now down to about 23, right? So, so we have to rebuild, you know. It, that is not going to be an easy task because the cost of equipment for school cricket is not what it used to be. We have a different set of headmasters with a different mindset. They are more inclined to be involved in track and field and in football. But somehow or other, we have got to get around it, and we have got to to get to the point where we 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 have more schools playing. Because um, unlike the USA, that who depend on the college system for their with your talent development, et cetera, et cetera. It is a high schools in Jamaica and in the rest of the Caribbean too that we depend on to um, to produce our players that we can polish and finish. So whatever it takes, you know, we can have to 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 get more schools to um to start playing again, to start participating again. And and in addition to that, one of my tasks will be to en encourage even a small number of schools to start playing in a female cricket league that we intend to get started yes. as early as as early as next December when the next cycle of cool cricket starts. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Dr. Bennett, as we monitored what started yesterday in Port of Spain with the CARICOM Cricket Conference, and at the mm -hmm. same time monitored what happened at the conference center with your 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 election, I just wanted to yeah. find out if you have a comment on where West Indies cricket is at the moment, given what has happened in Port of Spain with the discussions with the heads of government, ERC, WI colleagues and so on over the past 48 hours because it is generally felt that the territories have to be strong for West Indies cricket to be strong. Right, yeah. Well, unfortunately, Lance, I, because of the elections that we had yesterday, which took up most of the day and a part of the night, I, I was not able to join that um, yes. that discourse in, in Trinidad. So, so I'm not in a position to comment on that. Yeah. Um, but as far as West Indies cricket is concerned, I think that since the um, the, 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 the tenure of, of uh, Dr. Schaller has started, we we have seen some improvement. Um, more emphasis is now being placed on the development of the game in the Caribbean. And I, I think that going forward, you will see and um, you, will, you will probably see or probably be happy to see um, a situation in which West Indies cricket is developing and is um, having more international success than we have for the past 20 years. Yeah. But, and we have seen some of it already because we have won, what, two or three T20 series about, uh, about, um, against England and against Pakistan and against India, uh, three big teams. And then we went to Australia and we really thought that we would have been whitewashed. We actually won a test match and one at T20. So, so um, there are signs of improvement, and I'm, I'm just hoping that it continues. And under his watch, and and what he's been doing for cricket, um, I am sure you're going to see a graduated improvement uh, as we go forward. Yeah, and the grapevine mm -hmm. had told us, uh, Dr. Bennett, that um, Dr. Shallow had endorsed your candidacy for this presidency, even though it may not have been something public. I suspect you probably have heard from him uh, with a congratulatory message or something in the past yeah, like four he, hours. Yeah, he did call me. Um, you know, sometimes I hear, I hear comments being made as if to say, well, to be the friend of Dr. Shallow is a bad thing. And um, I am very, I'm very privileged and, and, and happy to have him as a friend. Um, one need to realize that relationships go far away. And if you you have a good relationship with the president of CWA, you can more effectively represent your territory. So, so, um, so I have no, no, um, I have 
no excuses I mean to make, right? I am I I am happy to be his friend and we get along very well and and hopefully the relationship will work for the betterment both of West Indies cricket and Jamaica's cricket also. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett, and yeah. congratulations mm -hmm. again on becoming the new JCA president. And uh, we will continue this discussion because, as we just mentioned, uh, the cricket in the territories have to be strong for West Indies cricket to be strong. Uh, thanks again and congrats. We'll talk again soon. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll be back with more on the Sportsman. So, a lot more cricket to talk about on the show. And uh, on the other side of the break, we'll continue that. Yes.